that was Dixie Belle trying to get Loris to play with her. And as you saw, Loris did not want to be bothered, but that did not stop Dixie. Back, forth, back, forth. We have the most patient cat. We really do. Welcome back, my friends. My name is Emmy. My husband is Paul. And you are watching the channel Frugal Money Saver. We are so happy you are joining us today. Today is Viewer's Choice or Challenge Tuesday. Yay! And we want to thank Kim, Alyssa, and Mary for all submitting a very similar theme. They all wanted to know how Paul and I garden, how we container garden, how you can garden for low cost and garden in a small amount of space. And we are so happy to bring today's video to you on that exact topic. So if you are new here, we are an early retirement debt and mortgage-free couple living in the state of New York and basically our channel just encourages you to have a full abundant life while spending less money. So if that sounds good to you, please stick around. We want to start off just with a little bit of a preface about Victory Gardens because right now food prices in the stores have exploded. We all know how much food is costing right now. Well, what's a simple solution? How about if we try to grow some of our own? It's simple, it's nutritious, it's fun. There are so many benefits to a small container garden. During World War II, about half of American households had victory gardens. This was a way to ensure that people had adequate produce. People were really encouraged to start growing their own food during World War II. They were encouraged to reduce the demand on commercially grown vegetables and also to help with packing materials because these vegetables had to be shipped and packaged in something. So the government really pushed that Victory Garden theme. By 1943, there were 20 million victory gardens and over 20 million acres of victory gardens grown. Think about that. That is just so encouraging and so amazing. And they did it because food was expensive, food was scarce, and growing your own food was a simple solution. By growing the victory garden, this in turn guaranteed more food for the troops if we were growing our own. So it makes perfect sense. By the time the war ended in 1945, 8 million tons of food had been grown in Victory Gardens. Makes me pretty proud actually, right? I mean, I think that's just wonderful. So are Victory Gardens gone? Are they a thing of the past? Absolutely not. We've given them different names now. People who want to self-sustain or people who just basically want to save money, be more health conscious by growing vegetables that you know what have been sprayed on them. Like we don't use any pesticides at all on any of our vegetables. We don't spray them with anything. We're super conscious about that. So it's just a way to add surplus to your food supply. So the first thing you wanna do when you decide, yes, I think I am gonna plant some veggies and have a little bit extra food. Even if it's three plants, that's three plants. So just think positive on this. You need to figure out first and foremost, what area you're in in the country. What will grow where you are? You really have to figure out your climate and the zone you live in. And that's super easy. Just go on to Google and put the town and the state that you live in and ask what zone it is. And then they'll tell you exactly what vegetables will grow in your area. What can you grow these plants in? You can grow these plants in basically any food safe container. A milk jug. We go to the local bakery and we ask for their icing buckets before they throw them out and they're happy to give them to us. As you'll see, half our garden is icing buckets. 
but they work wonderfully. So anything that is food safe, you can plant in. And to check if it is food safe, there's numbers on the bottom of your plastic container. Just pop those into your computer and those numbers will tell you if that is a food safe container or not. And don't be afraid to spend a little extra money on plants already started. We do buy plants that are already started and in our ground garden, we do plant seeds. And yes, Paul will be doing corn this year. Going to your local nursery and picking up a six pack of basil, a six pack of tomatoes, a six pack of pepper plants, and planting them in containers, it's a win-win. We bought three plants for $3.49. So you figured that's a less than $1.20 a plant. Do you know how many tomatoes we will get off of that one plant? So it more than makes up for the cost of it. So think of it that way. Now we are going to show you how we contain our garden. We use garden soil in a bag, we use compost, and then we use earth from our gardens. If you're just doing container gardens, we recommend you buy potting soil for vegetables. Now you're going to see us using garden soil in our pots only because we dump it into our garden, mix the earth, mix our compost, and mix the garden soil together and then we put it in our container garden. And if you have any questions, ask down below, but after you see Paul's awesome tutorial, you will understand. After we are done showing you our planting, we are going to make a Victory Garden one dish meal. It is delicious, Paul approved, he tasted it on camera. This is a one pot meal that uses up that garden fresh produce. So let's get right to this. I'm going to turn the camera around and we're gonna get out in the garden. Here you go. As you can see, this is our compost container and look at all this beautiful organic material that we created. And this is excellent for putting in your gardens, in your potted plants, in your container gardens. It's just wonderful. Okay, so I put the compost in this mixing tub. All I'm gonna do right now is, I just wanna pull out some of the stuff that didn't break down yet, and that's gonna go back in the compost. So like we have things like, I don't know what this is, could have been pumpkin. Basically anything that we had in the kitchen from making salads or any organic um, greens, uh, there's no fats, there's no bone. We put eggshells in here, we put coffee grounds in here. And any plants that we have purchased or we have from last year, when they die, I put that soil back in. And this is only a small part of our compost. He only took about, how much, a shovel full? These or? are like two shovels. Cause okay, now... so we purchased this at the Home Depot. It was on sale, $2 a bag. Uh, it's 0.75 cubic feet of miracle Grow garden soil, all purpose. This was a great deal. What I'm gonna do is mix this with my compost. You can actually buy compost in a bag. Very easy to make a compost container at your home. Do it out of a laundry basket, anything. Just park it somewhere and fill it up. I'm gonna add half a bag to the compost and mix it together. Now what Paul is doing is taking that compost and the garden soil and mixing it into regular garden dirt. And that's what we're going to do. We're gonna mix that all together. Paul will show you. Paul's just taking a hoe now and mixing the bagged garden soil with the compost and our earth. If you don't have the earth to do this, regular ground soil, what you're going to wanna to use is potting mix for your container gardens. It's a lighter mix. Just a helpful tip. Now what Paul's going to do is mix this into the earth and then we're going to put it in our buckets. Also, when you get your pots, you wanna make sure you put holes for drainage in the bottom of them. I used a small electric drill, but you can use a hammer and a nail, anything that makes a hole in the bottom. This way you won't overwater. So we get a three pack of these plants. These are tomato plants from our greenhouse for $3.49 a pack. 
So we're going to take out your plant. You're going to just carefully pull apart the root system a little bit. We're going to spread the roots out and we're going to bury this plant up to the first leaf. That's how deep we're planting this. So we're going to make a hole, put your plant in, and gently pack the dirt around it. Now this dirt's going to settle, so I'm going to add some more. Okay, now we're planting hot cherry peppers. We love hot cherry peppers. Same thing, I'm going to open up the root system a little bit. So here we have my basil. We paid $3.49 and I picked one that had several plants in it. You see these little guys? We're going to pull them out because they're not the strongest plant and they'll just take energy. All this basil cost me $3.49. If I would have gone to the supermarket, a bunch of basil would have cost me $3.60. So the way I look at it is, do you know how much basil this is going to give us? And I'm using the exact same garden mix that Paul just made in our garden. And I am going to show you exactly how I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna separate this just like this. Okay, and I'm gonna put half on this side and I'm gonna put half on this side. Do not fear that the roots are going to panic and the plant's gonna die, it's not. Just gives the roots a little bit more space to grow out. Now you can start this from seed and we have done that, but we were away so much in April that we figured we would just buy some plants this year. Even still, so much more economical. Here's two plants here. We're going to get probably two plants out of this one, two plants out of this one. It is now several days later and we just wanted to show you how beautiful the plants are doing we planted. Because some people are afraid if you separate the roots a little bit or you transplant them into these pots that they're going to go into shock. This is literally three days later and they are doing absolutely beautifully. So we're excited to have some fresh vegetables soon. Now we do have two in the ground gardens as well, but this was more of showing you how to do container gardens. Even if you can't do a full blown garden, you certainly can do this. Look at the basil. Remember I was showing you that I separated them. Look, look at how beautiful they're doing. Each root system is just flourishing. Everything looks great. So we hope this was encouraging to start your own little tiny victory garden, no matter how much land you may have. So we hoped that was encouraging and informative. A couple of notes. Always wear gloves when you're working with soil. So Paul had them on, I had them on. When you're working with earth, even if it's packaged, wear gloves please how beautiful did the plants look already they are doing so well we're so excited to be having these fresh vegetables we're going to be putting in pumpkin corn and yellow beans yellow beans so that's going to go into our lower gardens in the ground so we will share that with you as well and we will keep you updated every week we'll show you the babies and how they're growing and what we're doing to keep them well fed, which isn't really much, just lots of water and lots of sunshine, really. Now, I'm gonna turn the camera around and we're gonna get in the kitchen. And we are going to make a Victory Garden one pot mash with fresh vegetables and chicken. And why they call it a mash, I'm not sure, because nothing is mashed. It's mixed, but not mashed. So we hope you enjoy this. Continuing on with our victory themed garden video, I found a recipe called One Pot Victory Garden Smash Chicken and Veggies. I have never made this, 
but just looking at the ingredients, it looks like it is going to be mouth watering. So what you're going to need is about three to four cups vegetables. So I've got a yellow squash, I've got a zucchini, and I've got a tomato, and we've got an onion. You need two tablespoons of butter. I'm using two slices of bacon. It called for a heck of a lot more bacon. I will link the original recipe down below, but it seemed like a lot of bacon, so we're just sticking with two pieces. It also called for chicken tenders. I have cooked chicken. Remember, use what you have. The beginning of the recipe calls for cooking the chicken. I don't need to do that. I'm just gonna dice that chicken up and it's gonna be perfect. A cup of Parmesan cheese. You're going to need a half a cup of broth and I'm using the vegetable broth from our vegan meals that we had left over the other day. And then it calls for a half a cup of cream. I don't have cream, I'm using milk. I am sure it's going to be perfect. So the first thing I'm going to do is cut up these vegetables and cut up the chicken into bite-sized pieces. So that's first. Look at this medley of colors. I said to Paul, this is so beautiful. I fried up these two pieces of bacon nice and crisp and I'm going to remove them. Do not dump this bacon grease. We are going to use that to cook. All I did was add the onions first and I am going to cook these down until they are soft. So these cook for about three minutes. They're looking beautiful. It says to add two tablespoons of butter. That seems like an awful lot of butter. I'm probably adding like a teaspoon, if that now, and I'm just going to let that melt down. Two tablespoons right now just seems like an awful lot. Now I'm going to add the half a cup of broth I'm using veggie broth because that's what I had. You could use chicken broth, veggie broth, and if you don't have broth, I'm sure a half a cup of water would work as well. I'm gonna add the summer squash, and I am going to add the zucchini, and I'm going to add the tomatoes. Now I'm gonna cover the pan, and I'm going to cook it for three minutes covered over medium heat. This is cooking beautifully. Now you can add any kind of herbs or spices, salt, pepper, whatever you wanna to add to this. Cooked for three minutes, covered. Now I'm adding the chicken, mixing it up. We're going to cook it for 10 minutes uncovered. So this looks like it's gonna be really delicious. Look how much it makes. I was not expecting this much food, so this is wonderful. Okay, so we're gonna let it cook another 10 minutes uncovered over medium heat, stirring it frequently. So we're just grinding in some black pepper, and we're gonna add a little garlic powder as well. You add whatever seasonings you would like. And we're just gonna keep mixing this. So now we're gonna add our half a cup of milk. Again, it did call for cream, but this is whole milk, so I think we're gonna be just fine. Okay, just give that a little mix. And now we're going to take our cup of Parmesan cheese and add that, and okay, it's getting better by the second. <laughs> we're gonna cook this down till it gets nice and creamy. So we're just slowly cooking this, and we want the liquids to cook down. I'm taking our bacon, and I'm crumbling it and adding it to this as well. So we're gonna give this about another minute more. This is a one pot meal. And if you have leftover chicken, this is perfect. Even if you don't and you follow the original recipe and cook up some chicken before you add the vegetables, either way, this is gonna be a win-win. So we're gonna cook it for about another minute or two and then we're gonna let Paul give it a taste. This looks perfect as is. You could definitely mix it in with pasta. You could mix it in with rice. We're gonna eat it just like this, but you know what I need to do. Tiny bit of Parmesan cheese on top. Paul's gonna to give it a taste and he'll tell us what he thinks. Okay, Victory Garden smashed vegetable dinner. <laughs> This, this smells awesome, first of all. This is really nice. Let's try it out. 
This is great. This is awesome. You could have this any time of the year and it makes you feel like summertime only because of the fresh vegetables, the blend, the taste. The vegetables are a crisp, tender, which I like. I don't like mushy vegetables, so the vegetables have a little crunch. Yeah, the whole meal is just fantastic. I love it. I can't wait to have another bowl of this. This is good. Real good. You gotta try it. Paul approved. That was a super win. Really delicious. Think of it when these fresh vegetables go on sale at the supermarket. Think of it when you start harvesting your delicious Victory Garden produce. We need to combat these high prices right now. It may take just a little bit of work, but the money saved and the fresh produce that it will produce is so worth it, I guarantee. Even if you just do an herb garden, do an herb garden, grow some chives, basil, grow some thyme, whatever you enjoy eating, grow it. Little containers, Perfect. Now, today's question of the day is do you garden? What do you grow? Do you do land garden? Do you do container garden? And also, what grows best in your part of the country or the world, wherever you are? Please leave that information down below. We would love to know. It's so encouraging to us and to our viewers when we all know we're on the same page working towards that same goal. So we hope this video was helpful. Don't forget Tuesday is viewer choice or challenge. Send any ideas you may have for a video or a challenge you may have for us and you will be mentioned on Tuesday's video. Please don't leave them in the comments section below. Send your ideas to our email frugalmoneysaver at gmail.com. Send us your ideas and we would be so happy to take a look at them and see if we can do a video about them. Thank you for spending this time with us. Please give this a big thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't. By all means, leave us a comment what you're growing this year. So we ask you to stay safe. We ask you to stay well. And above all, we wish you blessings. Until our next video, bye-bye.